Are you ready for the best damn radio show on the planet? Men Hour Nation, rise up. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour at the dark. Say that Why well, bring you the host, Mike, Buck, and Cone? You know what's coming to the list. Sports talk and what you about to hear right here. I second that. Go. You know that that's us when we talk about sports. Giving you facts on the field to the core. Uh, Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, tell us some more. Oh no, your station not dropping no music. Starts like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Then four and the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck, Mike, and Combs, you know what's going on. Man, now we're at the dark, no LA, we the big spark. No fourth and inches, won't cut short. Got the best talking, it's all sports. Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live, all three speaks, go. And what is going on, man? Our nation. It's your boy, BC Brandon Combs, coming to you live here in the great city of Chicago. We have got a great show lined up for you guys. We are going to talk about the Cubs landing their man, Dansby Swanson. We're going to talk about the White Sox shocking the entire city and making any signing in the world. But they do go out and get a very good Andrew Benatendi. Fitz is going to tell you why. It might actually be the best deal in White Sox history. I don't know about that. But we'll talk about it. We're going to have ACL Pro Tom Gorski on the show. That's going to be a lot of fun. And then we'll wrap up talking about the Chicago Bears versus the Philadelphia Eagles. But before we move any further, I got to welcome the man, the myth, the legend, Ryan Fitzgibbons. What's going <laughs> That's on? Mike? A little much. You're, <laughs> you're setting expectations way too high. Yeah, the Sox, the Sox actually spent some money. I'm still not taking back what I said about Jerry Reinsdorf, but they did spend some money. So did the Cubs. The Cubs yeah. finally get a shortstop. I thought it wasn't going to happen, but yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think it was going to happen either. For well, baseball before, nerd. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I, I've been geeking out all off season long about a lot of these moves. We were talking right before the show came on, how crazy it was that, that the giants were about to sign Aaron judge and their, their world series rights went from 40 to one to 20 to one. And then they go ahead and get Carlos Correa and they go from 40 to one to 40 to one. <laughs> we, we were like, Five the, like how does that work for, for a guy like Carlos Correa? But the Cubs Five and White Sox made some moves. Much. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's, one of those things, but before we get into those moves, man, I, you you upped the swag a little bit this week. I did. You did. I did. Yeah, I mean, now yeah, you have you, two you photos did. behind you. Got you. The Bulls who lost by over twenty points to the Knicks on <laughs> Friday. I I, yeah. I I got a little bit on that too, and then we got my White Sox uh, from the year the the six championships for the Bulls, and then the one for the White Sox that nobody remembers. Yeah, you went you went from having one photo behind you, now you got two. So you're getting there. Yes. I mean, it's it's not I mean, every every week. I'll what what we're gonna week. what we're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna figure out a design. I'm gonna come up there and I'm gonna help you build it all. We're we're gonna we're gonna build you a little studio. Um and then when I buy my house, I'm gonna build myself a little studio. I mean, I got a little bit more swag than you do, but a little, little bit. It's still not it's still not as much. You should see all the stuff that I've got hanging around here that I could put in the background. It's ridiculous. But um, no, we're gonna we're gonna definitely uh, get that going for you. But let's get into it, man. So the Chicago Cubs, it's it's fresh. They go out and they get Dansby Swanson, seven years, hundred and seventy seven million dollars. Boils down to a little bit about twenty five and a half million per year. And before this off season started, I was not uh, out of all the shortstops. I didn't think that Dansby Swanson was the guy that I was going to to want to see at shortstop for the Chicago Cubs. Now, I did say that Swanson up the middle with Nico Horner would be a lot of fun to watch defensively. Like, I, I think that that him. makes for – but we're looking at a guy who hits about 265 on average with about 17 to 25 home runs, somewhere in that area. And so when they, all the other guys were signing at 11 years, 300 million, 13 years, 350 million, I was like, you know what? For that amount of money, I'm okay with the Cubs not landing them. 
And now you get Dansby Swanson for seven years. And I said a couple weeks ago, I said I wanted one of these guys at five to seven years. I don't want him at 11. Mm -hmm. Seven years, 177, a higher AAV, shorter deal. Like, I actually thought that this was a great get for the Chicago Cubs. And then you start taking into account that you're going to get Dansby Swanson on a year where the shift is gone all infielders have to have two feet on the dirt. I think averages are going to spike a little bit. So maybe we do get 285 out of Dansby Swanson. And not to mention, he is one of those guys that last year, the last two years in Atlanta, which is a ballpark that plays really big, he's hit 27 and 25 home runs respectively. So coming into Wrigley Field, I wouldn't be surprised to get 285 and 30 out of them. And, and, have him hitting at a better percentage higher in the lineup, maybe have him leading off or maybe have him batting second behind Nico Horner. I really think that they could set this up, but they can't be done yet in the off season. If you ask me. Well, they could be. My my only take on it is I, I don't think they're ready to compete yet. You might, you know, you might be dreaming, but I don't know if they're ready to compete yet. Maybe that's next year. But this is a definitely a great pickup. This is the best pickup at shortstop for the years and the price. Um, I he he was a higher war player than Carlos Correa uh, last year, um, and got a lot less years on a contract. Same age, I think they're the same age, maybe a year apart. Uh, I think they're I think they're tracking uh, Dansby as a better uh, shortstop defensively. So. Yeah, yeah, and and I like I like Dansby Swanson. I really do. I liked him in Atlanta. I thought he was a good player. I thought he was a really good complement to Ronald Acuna Jr. And I feel like this is a guy for over the next seven years. If you build around him, if he is the centerpiece, you could be okay, right? Like, and when I say not done in the off season, I, I don't mean going out and, and getting the an ace or or going out and getting you know a a catcher for the of the future right i'm talking about maybe going out and getting a gary sanchez for two or three seasons maybe going out and getting a uh even a guy over uh the the third baseman from uh the dodgers there with the the redhead what was his name uh justin turner justin turner maybe you can go get justin turner on a one or two year deal to play third base you can move patrick wisdom over to dh i'd be fine with patrick wisdom as a dh i just don't want to see him as my everyday third baseman i don't i I don't think he's he's to me he's a liability defensively Mm -hmm. and i don't think he can stay healthy if he's your everyday third baseman so you can either platoon him at first, and whenever you know Matt Mervis is ready to play, you can you can have those guys come in and out, or if Matt one of them takes over, then then good. You know what I mean? But I still think that they need a couple of, of little pieces here and there over the offseason. You can't be done and compete in this division, not with what the Cardinals are doing. And that's just beat the fucking Cardinals, man. <laughs> <laughs> just, just beat the Cardinals. They're gonna be tough again this year, man. They are. I know they are, they're and they got they got my they guy Willie. Cubs are a year away, but I yeah. I well, know. the Cubs might be a couple years away. I mean, yeah. this pitching staff, this young pitching staff, really has to. They're gonna if they're going to win this division, this pitching staff is going to have to pitch above their expectations, right? Like for me. This year, right now, if you go into this season with the roster you currently have constructed, I think 82 wins is a great season, right? Yeah. But if you go and you add Justin Turner, if you go and you add Gary Sanchez to run a young pitching staff, and then maybe even add another bullpen arm, maybe another, you know, uh, another back end of the rotation type guy, then you start becoming just as good as the Cardinals are right now on paper, on paper. You, I mean, you still got to go out on the field and, and perform. As Jeremiah chimes in, Swanson is your present under the tree and Drew Smiley is in your stocking. Did they <laughs> sign Drew Smiley? I didn't see that. I didn't, no. I, I know he's still a free I agent. I don't, I don't think I that don't they, think so. maybe, maybe Jeremiah is breaking some news here. Jeremiah, yeah. you, you got some, you got some, 
some yeah i don't know you got some some Maybe he stuff in your in your back I pocket here i don't know i look i i like drew smiley um you know there's probably a couple of pitchers that i would want them to go get before him um but i he'd be a nice he, he'd be nice to have him back um i i wouldn't be upset with with him jeremiah says first to report <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm with it. If that's what they did this morning, I, I'll be happy with it. Now, like I said, a catcher and, and you know maybe a one or two year deal for for a third baseman would be would be ideal. So, yeah, not looks only like did they're the... expected to sign Drew Smiley 20 minutes ago. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, Atta boy, not, Jeremiah, no, way to break the news. But Jer- uh, Jeremiah's on the phone right now with Drew Smiley trying to get yeah. him to the Cubs. I <laughs> like it. Him up. I like it. So, speaking of surprises and speaking of things that we didn't see coming, the White Sox, your White Sox, went out and got Andrew Benatendi. And I, when I saw the news, my jaw dropped because I did not That's expect amazing. the White Sox to spend $1. $1. But when you think about the story and, and everything that goes into the background of it, it kind of makes a ton of sense. So how shocked were you with the Andrew Benatendi Center? Absolutely shocked. I mean, if anybody listened to any of the show, I never even had him on the board at all. I knew the Sox were going to spend some money. I mean, they needed to get a starting pitcher. Even their pitching coach said that. So I knew they would, I just thought they were going to spend at the edges kind of like they did last year. I think one thing that feeds into this is that AJ Pollock denied his own player option. So the Sox got about 9 million back from that, which was one of the dumbest. Uh, Speaking of Christmas presents options, under the tree, not right? Taken <laughs> by AJ Pollock. Cause there's no way he's going to get that money in free. I mean, they ended up having to pay him, I think 5 million, but yeah. Uh, there's no way he's going to get that money in free agency, but whatever. And I think that fed into this. So it gave him the money. I mean, it's only 15 million a year, uh, but or yeah, 15 million a year. Uh, it's the biggest contract in Sox history. And I think it's, I think it is one of the best, probably not the best, but one of the best because it balances this lineup. We're talking about a team that was tw- you know, 20th against right-handers. They were even worse against right-handers in 2021 and in 2020. I mean, they hit the crap out of left-handers, but you got to hit, you know, 90% of the league pitches right hand. You know, 90% of the population is right-handed. But, um, yeah, I mean, I just think this is key. They needed that left-handed bat. I think that's even more key. He did win a gold glove, but this is not a gold glove outfielder. He, he he's definitely solid. This makes their defense better. They don't have Andrew Vaughn tracking balls in left field this year. They won't have Gavin Sheets out there. I think this complements Oscar Colas. I think this means that Oscar Colas is starting game one. Um, 24 years old, you know, had a great uh, year in double A and triple A. Just great numbers all the way through over 900 OPS. I think this gives him leeway to bat him ninth for part of the season, see if he can come along through the season. Uh, I think it's a great pick, and I really think it balances this lineup. If you get, you know, he I was calling him the poor man's Bryce Harper. If you get, uh, if you get, if you have him and he's about 70%, 80% Bryce Harper, and then I know he's not going to have the power, but he'll have some power in this, in this ballpark, same way as Dancy. Dansby Swanson will probably hit more home runs for the Cubs, but I think it'll be a lot more for Ben Attendee. I think he's a 15 to 20 home run guy, maybe a little less depending, but no, you so- can argue with me on that. But, uh, and then you have Andrew Vaughn. If he's 90% Jose Abreu, your, your team really did improve this off season a lot. Yeah. And, and I've watched Andrew Ben Attendee since he's come up in the Red Sox organization. When he came up, I was actually living out on the East coast. The Red Sox were the home team. So I was, I was watching a lot of Red Sox games and this kid is a doubles machine. Now his, his production last year was a little bit different. I think he had a down year. I I don't think he was happy with where he was at with in Kansas city. And then being with the Yankees, I just don't think he was happy with his role with the Yankees being a platoon guy. I think for the White Sox, this is an amazing deal. And as Jeremiah says, the funny part is it's a value buy for most other organizations, but it's the richest deal in Sox. (laughs) And, and 
I think that you're going to get a guy who is a doubles machine. I mean, this guy just hits gaps. And not only that, but like we said with Dansby Swanson, you're getting a guy in a year where they are banning the shift. He's a left-handed bat. You're banning the shift. You're making all infielders have two feet on the dirt. It's going to open up even more for this kid. So I I think you can expect about a 310 to 315 season with about 20 home runs and probably back to his normal 40 to 50 doubles. And, and if you get that type of production – out of Andrew Benatendi, I think that that makes the White Sox the best team in the AL Central, and I think that that makes them a top three team in the American League. Period. Wow, big words. I I, I, I like this White know, Sox. I, I, I like this White Sox team for years. Like I yeah. I really thought that TLR coming on really set this team back about four years. Which... But this this roster, this group of guys that they have, this team should be winning. Now, granted, you have about out of the nine guys starting, you have about six of them are first baseman slash DHs that are trying to play the outfield. Oh but this this team, the production wise and what they have and how they can hit, and if they produce to their potential and they don't have TLR sitting on the bench anymore, they got a guy that they believe in sitting on the bench. I really feel like this is going to be that year that you see that turnaround for the White Sox. I really do. And adding ben, Andrew Benatendi to that, I thought that before the Benatendi signing, adding Benatendi to that, I really think that they this makes these guys a threat in the American League. Absolutely. And you'd think just with law averages, I know some guys are injury prone. We all know that. We've seen it. Some guys' bodies just aren't built the same. But you would think with law averages, it comes back to the White Sox favor on injuries this year. You would think, and if they're not going to yeah. be that injured, I mean, you had 23 of the 25 starters miss, miss, or 23 out of 26 that they had this year, miss a lot of time. I mean, yeah. up and down, the only two guys that didn't get injured or miss significant time was Cease and, and Abreu, you know, uh, but other than, other than you would think the law averages come back and work in the Sox favor. If you get 140 games out of both Eloy and Luis Robert, yes, this is the best team in, in the American league central easily. And, and they, they, they do have a shot at a championship. So was this That's a redemption? Was this a redemption signing for Rick Hahn? I think so. I know they wanted him in the trade uh, for Chris Sale. They wanted him instead of Moncada. They got Moncada, who is one of the top. I mean, they both of the guys were one of the yeah. top five uh, guys in the minor leagues uh, back then. But they got Moncada, which was fine. I mean, he he has been good. He was terrible last year. Uh, but, yeah, I think it is a redemption signing. I think when you get TLR shoved down your throat, when you, when you know Han did not want him, for all yeah. the comments he made before and even some of them after the hire, he did not want them. So, yeah, this is a redemption. Maybe this is uh, Han putting the big pants back on. And that's another still a problem with the White Sox. Is is, is he now in charge? Yeah. Like, you don't, you don't know. Being in New England at the time of that trade, I got to tell you how pissed off Boston Red Sox fans were that they traded Moncada for sale. I mean, they were they were not happy. And at the time, I'm looking, the, the team was making a run. The, the Red Sox were making a run. They were fresh off of a World Series. They they thought that they could, you know, go back to back, win two out of three, so, something in that area. And they thought that Sale put them over the top, not knowing that Sale was going to pitch about on average three games per season. <laughs> <laughs> I could have told you that with that wind up. He was going to pitch 21 innings a year. Like the, nobody saw that coming, but. Giving up Moncada to them was a big deal. And I, I got to tell you, had they given up Ben Attendee instead of Moncada, I think that somebody might have lit Fenway Park on fire. <laughs> so it, it's probably a good thing for the for the Red Sox organization that it didn't happen, but that would have been a, a whole lot different deal. It would have been a whole lot of a different look for the for the Chicago White Sox also moving forward, too, right? Because you might have not with, with Ben Attendee in your outfield, with Eloy Jimenez in your outfield, and with um, uh, who's Robert. The center fielder there? Robert, Luis Robert in your outfield, you might not have held on to a guy like Andrew Vaughn, right? Like he might have become an expendable piece in your outfield, a trade that maybe you made for an arm or something like that. I think not getting Ben Attendee then and getting Ben Attendee now was actually a blessing in disguise for the for the White Sox. 
Yeah, I mean, you get you now you have both players and Makata. If you look at Makata in 2019, I mean, bet at 315 at over 20 home runs, he's he's an above average defensive third baseman for sure. But were you happy with the way he shut it down at the end of the season? Oh, I mean, I he, that, he completely shut it down, didn't he? I was at the game. He had three errors. They only gave him one, but it was three errors at third base. And it, yeah. I just feel like the guy, I feel like there's a problem there with motivation. And that was, a, that was in a game that they absolutely needed if yep. they were going to make a run at the division. Like, it, yep. everybody knew going into that game, if the White Sox don't win today, this division's over and they have no shot because it was a big swing game. It was, I believe it was the second game of the series. Yeah. And, and they had lost the first game and it was a really close game and they needed to beat Cleveland in that game to stay alive. And I mean, he just, he ended the white Sox season single-handedly in that game. Butchered third base. I don't think he's going to have a very big leash this year. I, I, I don't know who would play in his stead, but he's he better. I think this year there's got to be pressure on him to perform. Uh, I mean, he was okay in 21, 2020. He had the COVID issue. 2019 was his best year. I thought that was the guy we were going to have. I mean, there is very few players in this league that have less talent, that have more talent. Sorry, uh, than Mancata. <laughs> there just is. I mean, he, he's a switch hitter. He plays a great third base. He really does. Hits for power from both sides of the plate. He can hit for average. I mean, there's very few things this this kid can't do. But and there's something he's going a, on between the ears. That's he, why this is. That's why this is the best game around because it's 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 a mind game. Just when Makata is right, when Makata is right, and when Makata is not in his own head, he can be a top twenty five player in this league. Like he's got that kind of talent. But sometimes you wonder with Makata, does he want to be that guy? Yeah. Does he want to, can he, does he love the game as much as the game loves him? I guess is the right question. Yeah. Right? That is and, a good so, question. and so that's going to be one of those things to watch out for as we go through this White Sox season. Now we go into a season where the Cubs go and get their guy, Dansby Swanson. The Cubs are, are, still have a few moves to make in my opinion to even compete for the central the white Sox, to me look like they could be a top three team in the american league are the cubs about to compete in the nl central can the cubs win the nl central crown as currently constructed you're gonna have to have some injuries with st louis and what's milwaukee doing like i don't know what the hell that whole thing is i mean they have a talent they have some talent on their team but they're not they're not they don't do any i mean they're they're, they're they're trading talent and then they're picking up a couple of guys and and then they're trading guys and i'm like what the hell is going on in milwaukee how are you scared of them the reds and pirates don't even try to win so yeah Yeah. i think almost any year the cubs with a good good payroll and this pick up with Dan. I think they have a shot. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, five, six games go the other way for you. You win a lot of really close games and yeah, you're right there. I don't think they have the talent to do it, but you know, why not look at St. Louis? I mean, half the time St. Louis throws out garbage team. You think they're garbage and they win, you know, 10 games in a row at the end of the year, you know? Yeah. And my son chimes in and says, what's up, old man. (laughs) I'm going to kick his ass later. I'm going to kick his ass. (laughs) Anyway, so I, I think that the Cubs, well out. As, cur- yeah, as currently constructed, I don't think that the Cubs are – I don't even think the Cubs are top two in the division, let alone being able to win it. They've got one or two more guys that they've got to run through to be able to to really compete for the, for the National League Central. To me, the White Sox, again – they they're gonna I believe they're gonna win the central. I believe they were gonna run away with the central. I think that they might even be the best team in the American League, but we're, we're gonna find out soon. I think just the Cubs getting Dansby Swanson is saying like we're starting to open that window up. It's yeah. not gonna be this year. I mean, there's there's no. a really good chance they're you're right, they're gonna be second or third in the division, whatever, what have you. But the window is starting to open. I mean, they're not gonna waste these seven years, they're not gonna be terrible for the next three years. Yeah, as Jeremiah chimes in and says, the Cubs are a couple years away. The young guys are coming. That's true. You do got a lot of Matt Mervis and and Brennan Davis and a couple mm-hmm. others that are coming up through that Cubs organization. They are going to be good uh, in a couple of years. But investing now in the future is, is what the Cubs have decided to do, and, and I like it. So we are going to have a guest 
on the show. We are going to have ACL pro Tom Gorski on the show. Uh, we're going to have a conversation with him. But before we get to Tom, I got to bring on my guy who, and in, in, I got to uh, have an omission here because in the <laughs> in the feed, I put his name as Johnny Flores. It, I don't know it is autocorrect or what. I did everything on my phone, so I apologize for that. This is actually Johnny Torres with Southside Bags. So welcome to the show, Johnny. What's going on, buddy? Hey, guys. Good morning. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. What's up, Combs? What's up, Fitz? What's happening, Johnny? What's going on? Look at, see, look, morning. he's got better swag than you do, and he's he not even on the show. <laughs> All right, yeah. so Johnny with Southside Sorry, Bags, why, why don't you uh, why don't you give everybody a little uh, taste of what Southside Bags is all about? Well, first of all, thanks for having me, um, Combs. Yeah, Southside Bags started about, it's going to be probably about a year now. Uh, Southside Bags went live. We took over a blind draw over in the southwest side over here, suburbs of uh, Chicago Ridge. And so um, it just kind of took off from there. Um, it was They were just doing it old school there. They were doing the paper bracket, you know, in the names for the blind draws um you know things got a little bit serious i picked up some tablets we went digital uh, we used score holio score is an app that um many people that run tournaments use and so just kind of took off from there man really um um combs it's just been crazy it's just happening it's happening so fast so quick yeah uh, of course, now, you know, as you know, uh, we met over at Bourbon Street. I'm running Bourbon Street now on Thursday nights. Um, but, yeah, it's it's been great. We've been having a, a bunch of uh, shooters come out. Of course, we have some pros, Korski. Um, but, yeah, Southside, Southside Chicago does is, is, home of, uh, is, is home to a bunch of great shooters. And, um, you know, that's what we do. We're developing players that are not in that level yet. You know, they're, they're just used to – shooting bags in the backyards and so um we're we're taking it a step further and developing players and you know kind of educating i'm really nobody to, to educate but you know i just kind of share our expertise knowledge um you know of course there's different kinds of bags there's boards i mean you know combs you got a taste of it what do you think yeah yeah so i gotta tell you so it, i've been throwing with Southside bags for maybe about three weeks now since uh, since the last the friday after thanksgiving was the first time that i ever went over there and i'm i'm one of those backyard shooters that you talk about I, I play a lot of softball so i would throw in between tournament games and, and all that stuff or i would throw out in the yard and and, and play with the guys you know around the block or whatnot and I was like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm I'm not that bad. And then I went to the first day at Southside Bags, and I'm throwing up against guys who are throwing four baggers like it's nothing. And I'm like, holy hell, what did I get myself into? But then I started like talking to the guys and and really getting into it. I started talking to you a lot, and everybody within of Southside Bags community. I've been to, I don't know, probably four of the events now between, I, I know you guys do uh, Bourbon Street on Thursdays, do um, uh, short stops on Tuesdays. And every event that I've been to, I have not run into, and I, I told somebody this the other night, I have not run into one asshole yet. Like <laughs> everybody that's within this community is a good person. And they, they try to help you along with your game. So if they see a flaw in your game or a hole in your game, they'll actually try to help you. And and it, it, I love the idea that you guys do too, which a lot of people in the bags community are doing this now, which is the blind draw. So I could go in throwing my 20 bucks and my partner could end up being a, a, a pro, could end up being a guy who is on my level or could be end up being a guy who's halfway in between but we all have fun. Like nobody's mad. Like what I've, I've had a couple of guys on my team that are real shooters and I'm like, I feel bad because I'm like, man, I'm really holding this guy down from winning some money tonight. And, but they don't care. Like they're like, Hey man, don't worry about it. Hey, why don't you try this? Or why don't you try that? And so I, I really like the, the, what you've got going on with Southside bags, which is why we've kind of linked up here. Uh, we are actually going to be doing a show here in a couple of weeks from, um, from Bourbon Street, uh, we were going to go this week, but then they uh, they decided that they couldn't go this week because they they've got uh, some some Christmas parties and stuff. But we we've got you know uh, a really tight group there, and I really like what you're doing over at Southside Bags. As uh, Eric Duchesne chimes up in the comments as well, and he says Johnny's a great dude and has grown the bags community on the South Side. Hey, what's up, Eric? Yeah, yeah, oh. absolutely. 
absolutely that that's the whole intention here um is to grow the bags community and like i said um not we're not anyone really we're not pro, i'm not a pro so i'm not really you know one to pretty much give it i was gonna but, ask that <laughs> no 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 what's your no, back in guy i'm okay i'm i'm shooting like uh i don't know eric what do you think I, no no i'm i'm pretty decent i think um but yeah the, uh, overall the whole intention of this is to develop um just the back community like you mentioned um the back community is really strong i got into it a couple of years ago um i went to my first blind draw got paired up with a pro steve bernie said and so um i was like okay i show up and he's like what do you throw i'm like bags he's like yeah what kind of bags i'm like i don't know corn bags he's like no 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 he's like we don't throw those bags here so he, he, you know he puts out his his uh ultra ultra cycle bags and he's like we're gonna throw these i'm like okay that's fine well yeah um they've been very receptive like i said the community is really nice um it, it's a whole different environment you know um again don't forget bags is the only sport that allows you to drink as you are playing yes uh, I so love it. I, that's a big one right there uh, especially the drinking sometimes makes you better and then <laughs> makes you worse eventually i don't I think it makes you better hole. fits i i think it big makes you bags. i think it big makes you bags. think that you're better i don't know if it makes you better <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm, 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 for sure i'm with fits on that one um drinking beer does make me uh, in my as at least in my situation it does it makes me like, loosen up i guess i don't know all right, yeah. so we're gonna we're gonna bring Tom Gorski on the show here in just a minute. So Johnny, why don't you why don't you uh, intro uh, Tom and, and let us know uh, what he's all about before we bring him on? Absolutely. Um, so Tom Gorski uh, is a two uh, second year ACL pro. Um, he was a one year ACO pro, which is another um, organization. Um, but anyway, he Gorski is one of my my only sponsored ACL, ACL player right now. Um, Southside Bags is sponsoring his pro career. Um, but yeah, he's uh, coming to us from Lombard, Illinois. Um, oh, actually, that's his hometown, but he actually is staying in Villa Park. But without further ado, Tom Gorski, everyone. Tom, what's going on, buddy? Hey, thanks for having me on, Brandon. Thanks, Johnny. Hey, no oh, problem. So, so, Tom, we've got... We've got um, some questions lined up for you, but before we, we get into some of the other questions, why don't you tell the people that are listening, the people that are, are here about how you got into becoming a pro. Uh, I've been playing competitive cornhole or bags for nine years now. I always played in the backyards like everybody else. And my wife's uh, cousin decided to run like a family tournament. And I won that and said, this was this is kind of fun, doing, you know, playing in tournaments. And went on Facebook, found a group called Midwest Baggers, which is run by Rudy, and found the blind draw, and then been playing ever since. And it was like a few years ago. Uh, me and Gary Stelter played a lot. We decided to jump over to the ACO. We made it as ACO Pro that year. And then the ACL came out the following year, so we started playing that. And I think about three years after playing that, I was able to move up to the pro division last year as a PDC pro, which is kind of like the minor leagues. And this year I'm a regular pro. That's awesome. That's awesome. So how for, – for those of us that are – well, I shouldn't say us because I'm not one of them for sure. But for those people that are listening that want to become a pro, what what are some what is some advice that you could give to some of those guys that are shooting at Southside Bags on Thursday nights? Who who I look and I'm like, man, I could see that guy playing, you know, pro someday. Watching him on ESPN, you know, or or the guys over at Shortstops on Tuesday nights. What do these guys need to do to get to that level? Uh. When I, when I first started, just find the blind draws, and then you start to, you start to, to get into a group of the group of people that play bags. You see the better people, you see the better players. You play against them, you get better, and the bags the bags has become like a family, like a second family, mm -hmm. with everybody. And you just get into that group of people, start playing. If you get good enough, then people are going to ask you to be partners, and you start, then you start playing and bring your own partner tournaments, and then you start. Just keep practicing and moving on up. Our, now, uh, it, and now the ACL with the regional tournaments, they have uh, monthly regional tournaments, you know, playing those. 
you, you, you earn points and you get to play with the best and the, the best of the best. And that obviously makes you better is for yes. what these pro games is uh, and Johnny, I think alluded to it. Is there a standardization of the bag board combo? Cause I know in some, I'll look at a, a bag board combo and I'll say, I could play on that one. And then there'll be another one where I'm like, no good at uh, yeah. either slide too much or, or what have you. And, and if, are they standardized on, uh, you know, when you're playing on in, in one of those? Yes, there, there is regulations for the, the dimensions and uh, the ACL does have, it's, they want the specific weight. And you're, sp you gotta, you're supposed to use at least five eighths, I believe five eighths inch plywood uh, minimum. Wow. But as far as the smoothness on top, that's pretty much, you know, when the boards are brand new, new they're slow, and then they break in, they get faster. You know, it all depends on what kind of finish they put on it, what kind of, you know, if it's a semi-gloss or a gloss. Yeah, I would think it'd be hard to standardize that part of yeah. it. Do you have a preference, slide, slippery, or or in the beginning when they're not as slippery? What what do you have a preference, or does it not matter? Does I'm it not, not a big matter? fan of not a big fan oh, of real fast boards. Me, oh, okay. Medium to slow is is uh, I like the best. I think most yeah. that's what most people prefer. Yeah. So what what kind of bags are you throwing right now? I usually throw them on medium speed. I, just got sponsored by Dragon Bags, so uh -huh. we'll be, be throw, probably be throwing their ig igniters, which is if you guys are familiar with your bags, those like similar to a Surefire, or you know. So I, I like a bike of medium bag, like five five speed out of its ten scale, five or six. Okay. Now, now what when when you're talking about speeds? Now I just got into this, right? Like I just picked up. I, and I, I'm a novice, so I picked up a couple of different sets of bags, and the first ones that I picked up were the uh, the Titan bags, the the Stampede 2.0s, and Damn. they come here, and I see, I'm like, it's a 10 and a 6, and I'm like, oh, man, I don't know about that. And then I picked up a, a set of the, the All Slides as well, and these seem like they're going to be a lot slower than these Stampedes, so I, th I think I might go with that, because I was throwing on Thursday night, I, I would hit the bottom of the board, and all of a sudden it'd be hitting the back wall, so... Um, what, yeah. what are you looking for in a speed? Does it determine like if you're a, a height thrower or if you're you're you know if you try to throw it low? Like what determines what speed you're looking for? Well, definitely if you if you throw in low, you need a slower bag. Yeah, you, know, you throw Let's throw high, you can go with a faster bag. Okay. And, and those stampedes with ten, that's that's about as fast as you're going to get. Because most of them go on a scale of ten. Yeah, All right. So, so that's, basically, that's, what that's, you're saying is, I wasted my money. <laughs> no, <laughs> you should have talked to the pros first. I, I know. I should have. I look. I went to Southside Bags. I saw these guys throwing four baggers. They were all bringing their own bags. I had this little set of like corn bags that I was brought with me. I put them back in the truck quick as hell once I saw all the bags everybody else was throwing. And I'm like, <laughs> you know what? I gotta go out and get me a set of bags. So I was like, oh, look, Titan Bags having a fifty percent off sale. Let me go grab a set of these. I didn't know, you know You're what like I mean. The so kid from Sandlot, who comes with a plastic bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, please throw it in the hole. Please throw it in. The hole. They're good on. <laughs> they'll be good on slow boards, and you, you can still use them. You can still use money boards. Just have to throw a little bit higher. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I got that's my biggest problem right now is is my consistency. Like I, there will be a round where I'll hit two or three in the hole and then the next round I'll miss the board two or three times. Like it's, I've, I've got to get on that consistent level, but there, there are some real shooters in Southside bag and everybody talks about their favorite shot and, and all the things that they're doing when I'm sitting there talking, you know, to some of these guys on Thursday nights over at bourbon street is that they've all got a different type of shot and everybody throws it differently in, in, in their approach to it. Your favorite shot is the push shot. Now what is a push shot? It's a bag that's in front of the, in front of the hole, and you mm -hmm. you push that bag in the hole along with the bag you're pushing. They both go in the hole. Okay, so does your throwing the your shot in in the way you throw does that alter based off of your opponent? Uh, lot, lot of, yes, a lot of times strategy, you're, try, you're trying to block the hole to try to make your opponent miss, and then you're pushing through, to, if he misses, you're pushing through to clean up. Gotcha, 
Gotcha. Now, when I'm there on, on Thursday, what I found is there's a lot of guys who like to slide. Not a whole, there is a few guys. Like, there's uh, the, the guy who helped Johnny develop the software. That dude hits airmails like it's nothing. I mean, like, I, I've watched it and I'm, I'm amazed at how he throws. But there's a lot of guys there that like to slide in. So I like to play a lot of defense. I'll try to get a bag set up in front of the hole to make these guys yeah. try to slide it past it or, or whatever they've got to do. Is there a lot of that in the ACL? Do you see a lot of guys trying to play a more defensive strategy versus offensive? Or is it you guys are just at that level where, look, I, I'm just trying to put four bags in the hole. I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to play, you know, defense versus anybody. It's, it's split. There's a lot of people that just go hole for hole. And there's a, there, there's a big bunch of people that like to first bag block and, and there's people that actually, uh, uh, instead of pushing the, after the block or airmail, there's what's called a roll bag now, where people will actually roll over a bag. Yep. Yeah, I've seen that. So that's big. There's a lot of those people like they, they put a block up first, and and then they'll roll over the bag. The main thing is they're they're trying to block to make you miss, so they can get a minimum of two points that round. Eric Duchesne chimes in and says, Gorski's push shot when it's on is so good you can't like block him. Either he can go through a beast for sure. So, Tom, when when if you could face one guy, we like to have a lot of fun on this show, as you can tell. We'll we'll banter back and forth. We'll talk shit to one another. You know, I'm a Cubs fan. Fitz is a Sox fan. Even even though neither one of us really dislikes the other side. As, as much as most Cubs and Sox fans do when you're when you're in your teens or whatever the case is. Are you a Cubs or Sox fan, Tom? I'm a Cubs fan. Add a oh, boy. God. Add a boy. <laughs> Nobody can be perfect. <laughs> yeah, Tom, look, from this conversation with Tom, he's about as close as they come. So yeah. Tom, this is what I'm this is what I'm gonna pull out of you. And I'm gonna pull this out of every guy that we talk to moving forward with the ACL Pro. And I did this a couple times. We've we've had a couple UFC fighters on the national show, and I've done this with them, and it's it's actually made for some good content at the end of it. I wanna know if you could face one guy in the ACL. This afternoon, you're, you're going to call him out. You're going to take him on the boards. You and him are going to go at it one on one. Who are you challenging, and why? Uh, probably Jay Rubin. We we've uh, we started pretty much around the same time. Yeah. Is there is it, what what is what is his ranking? What is your ranking? Where are you guys at on, on the pro level? Well, his ranking is he's 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 in the top ten. He's just, he's just. He's probably definitely won the top five in the ACL, you okay. know? and you know his game is is uh, strategy wise and strategic uh, and hitting the shots wise is probably one of the best. All right, so I learned, I, learned, I learned a lot of strategy just watching him. Awesome. I'm going to bring Johnny back on the show here before we get off. Johnny, do you have any uh, anything, any questions, anything you want to say to uh, Tom before we before we let him go here? No, no, absolutely. I uh, just want to thank Tom um, for being the first uh, interviewee here for Southside Bag. Uh, what are we calling it? Southside? The, the shooter of the star week. Star of the week. Star, yeah. of, the star of the week. Um, no, I just want to thank you for coming out. Um, very part of what you do. You, you have an awesome career, and that's our, the reason, one of the reasons why we're sponsoring you. So, um, wish you luck in your ACL Pro uh, second year now. Um, but yeah, uh, just wanted to mention uh, we will be continuing these interviews on January 8th. Um, we're expecting to get uh, Nico Morales, who's another ACL Pro. So, but yeah, thanks for coming on, Tom. Appreciate it. Um, Thank you, Johnny. Combs Fix, thanks for having us. Yeah, no absolutely. Problem. Hey, I, I hey, Tom. Have... Before before we go, before we go, I know Fitz got another question for you. I want to know. We're gonna have, we're gonna have Johnny Flor or uh, we're gonna have um, Nico Morales on here in a in a couple of weeks. Who would win, you or Nico? Me and Nico always have good games. He usually comes. He the last few times we played, he's come out on top. But, but we always have today, a... though. Who would win today, Tom? Don't to... don't be afraid, Tom. Well, today, himself. right now, probably Nico. Nico's been on fire. Oh man! Oh, yeah. at least you're honest. Yeah, at least Nico, you're honest. Not you can do with that. Go Nico ahead. Morelli, Nico Morales has been on fire, definitely. Um, yep. 
Did you ask about that? I, I, my question was, when we talk about PEDs, performance-enhancing drugs, do you think that drinking does make your game better, or do you not drink at all? I mean, that's fine, too. Uh, me and John were talking about it. It makes me better the first two, three drinks in. Once I get to seven or eight, I get worse, and I get loud <laughs> and frustrated. <laughs> Yeah, that the drinking can calm the nerves. I don't drink that much, especially okay. at the at the pro nationals. I really don't drink nope. at all. They don't let the you. Blind yeah. draws, you, but the blind draws, it, it it can calm the nerves a little bit. But yeah, it becomes a point where <laughs> you go the other way. Yes. Michael both says, uh, "Tom, we need a Western Suburban League." Um, I'll be actually throwing. Uh, I'm gonna head over to uh, uh, McLafferty's today and throw over in Lamont. So. Uh, if you're over there, Michael, head over to McLafferty's and, uh, you know, try to win yourself some money. I got a couple guys going over there today. So, all right. So thank you, Tom. Appreciate everything that, you, uh, that you brought to the show. Thank, thanks for coming on. And uh, we look forward to chatting with you again. All right. Thanks. All right. Good Absolutely. luck. Absolutely. Good luck. All right, Johnny. How do, how do you think it went today? It went good. Um, yeah. I was a bit nervous here. Yeah, you can tell by the ums, the ums, the um, uh, no, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but yeah. <laughs> no uh, I just want to uh, go ahead and uh, thank you, uh, Combs, for having us. Um, I'm looking forward to what we're going to accomplish in this next year. Um, you know, what a great start. We had Tom Gorski for our first interview. Um, like I said, uh, really good guy, really good stand up yeah. guy, and of course, um, a great shooter. Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, it was a great conversation with uh, with Tom. It was great having you on. I look forward to everything we're about to accomplish. We were just talking the other night. I'm looking forward to doing some of the our live shows. Uh, we're going to be streaming some of the matches. We're gonna we're gonna do something really good with Southside Bags, and we've got a lot moving forward. We are excited for what we're about to do. I know my guy Buck uh, from the national show. He's he's excited for what we're about to do. So um, we just got to get Fitz to come down so so we can destroy him. Oh, and I'll bags. come down. All you, right. can watch, you can watch the terrible the yelling <laughs> and the sweating. Well, well we got to get you Get you ready for the right baseball team first, Fitz. Oh, come on. <laughs> Attaboy. As, as you know, I'm Johnny. a diehard. I'm a diehard. I am a diehard Cup fan. Yes, yes, you're sorry to hear that. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> are in the playoffs this year, Johnny. We'll oh, we'll man. um we'll get the name right on the on the feed next time. My apologies for that, but uh, sometimes autocorrect gets the best of me. I don't know. I I drank a lot last night too, Johnny. So you got to forgive me. There you go. Oh, don't tell me about that. I, I went out to a blind draw last night. I got home at about four this morning. So. <laughs> oh, oh man, is that the one you were trying to get me to go to? Yeah, over. Oh, see, we would have never. I would. I wouldn't even be sitting here right now. I would have missed the interview. <laughs> I'd have been, <laughs> I'm too oh, old no. to go out till four o'clock in the morning, man. Stop it, Combs. You're only <laughs> as old as you feel. So yep. that's true. That's Just true. So I'm about 97 then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnny. Thanks for joining us, boss. We'll talk to you later, man. All right, guys. Thanks, thanks for Johnny. All we'll right, so that was there. Johnny Torres. That was uh, Tom Gorski, uh, ACL Pro. Man, look, I. The cornhole community has become something that I I, I really have enjoyed experiencing. Um, like I said, you know, I'm still a novice. I'm still out there throwing. Like, I'm not very good. But what you get out of it when you come down to Southside Bags is you get an experience with – there are some guys who are pros. There are some guys who are trying to be pro. There, I had a partner a couple weeks back – who had just come back from a pro tournament, even though he's not a pro, he went and, and saw what he could do. And that guy's talking to me about the way that I throw, how I could do something differently, what bags I should be looking at, that type of stuff. So if you're really interested in throwing on a competitive level, even if you're just interested in throwing and having some fun on a Thursday night, getting, a, getting out of the house, getting away from the wife and kids for a little while, or getting away from the husband and kids for a little while, there's a couple of females that throw down there that are oh, really sure. damn good. Um, that both of them, the, the two females that I see on a weekly basis, destroy me every time I'm up against them. You're and, gonna put and me I, up against them, and they're gonna. There, <laughs> there, there are some good shooters there. It's a lot of fun. Come on out Thursday nights at Bourbon Street. I know Tuesdays they're at shortstops. It's usually about thirty to thirty-six throwers uh, somewhere in that ballpark. And, and at, at Bourbon Street, I know they got five or six boards lined up all across. 
and it, it, it's a good time. It goes quick. Sometimes they even run a second tournament afterwards just to have a little bit more fun, put a little bit more money in the pocket. So um, definitely check us out, Southside Baggers. Uh, they are now sponsoring Man Hour Chicago, so it, it's, it's going to be a good partnership with them. Moving forward, though, we've got to get into some Bears talk before we get off the air here. Uh, oh, let me yeah. get into some of these comments here. Michael Bull says, Cubbies, a boy, Mike. We got a lot of Cubs fans oh, joining this show, man. I love it. I love it. Oh, I know I'm starting to hate the Cubs again. Well, we we've got to we've got to we've got to let the people know though that look, I'm a Cubs fan, and I don't hate the White Sox. Like I yeah. I think the White Sox are the best team in Chicago right now. I think that the White Sox are a top three team in the American League right now. And I don't hate the White I hate the Cardinals. Fuck the Cardinals. I hate the Brewers. The hell with them, too. And their freaking manager who makes me want to kick puppies every time they show his big nose face on freaking TV. I, I can't stand. I can't stand <laughs> that guy. He makes me like seriously makes me want to kick puppies. I hate the Brewers, but I don't hate the White Sox. And I know you don't really necessarily hate the Cubs. No, no, I don't. I don't. I mean, I used to when I was younger, I used to get in arguments. Uh, there's probably people listening now I used to get in arguments with. But after they won the World's, I mean, it just it's just kind of silly at this point. Yeah, Johnny I, times back in and says, I don't hate the White Sox, it, but the-, <laughs> the first statement you made. <laughs> Period. Thanks, Johnny. Yeah. Jesus. Anyway, the, the, the point you made to start this conversation, though, that the Sox are the best team in Chicago, which is true. And, they're, yeah. and they were 81 and 81. That's yeah. how bad the state of Chicago sports is right now. What do you think without? TLR before we get into the Bears what do you think without TLR what is what would you consider a successful season how many wins do they have to get to for you this year I'd say 93 or more and I think they can do it I mean I w- I would say because yeah. they won 93 a couple years ago uh I think they'll definitely be better with I I've said this before on the show that I don't think I never thought a manager made that big a difference until the, this this past two years yeah. I mean really I, I, mean, I thought before before the Ben Attendee signing, I thought they were a 93 to 95 win team. And after the Ben Attendee signing, I pushed them up to about 97 to 99. Yeah, you're more optimistic than me, but I think, yeah. I mean, I'm, like I said, law averages come back from the from injuries. You have less injuries this year. I think that's going to be a plus. Uh, yeah. I think that's going to be the key. I mean, the last two years just killed them with injuries, and but we'll see. Absolutely. So today we've got the Chicago Bears – versus the Philadelphia Eagles. And we were talking about this before, and to me, this game is going to be tough to watch. Like, I'm, I am very happy. I've watched every Bears game this season, sat on the couch with my father-in-law, watching the games, hanging out, yelling at the TV. Today I will be playing bags with the TV on in the background because I this is going to be a debacle. I, I don't think the Bears have a shot. I, I don't want to watch it. I don't think the, the Eagles this week and the Bills next week. Like These are two games that are going to be tough for Bears fans to watch, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Even me with my rose-colored glasses on, uh, it's it's not going to be good. <laughs> I think the defense really hurts them in this game. I think this game looks a lot like the Dallas game. Yeah. Although the Bears did come back in that game and make it interesting for a few minutes. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for growth wherever I can find it on, on the field today with, with Justin Fields coming off what I think was his best passing game, even with the two yeah. picks uh, uh, against Green Bay. I, I want to see some more growth there. He seems to feel it. I mean, I don't know. He couldn't even explain yeah. what it was, but he was trying to. Like, I feel like the passing's getting better. Um and yeah, I mean, I I, I want to see some you know stuff downfield, maybe a little bit more Velas Jones. I, I I don't know. What are you looking for in this game, really? I mean, maybe Chase Claypool takes another step forward. Well, he's he not playing today either. But uh, what Claypool, are you looking for? Claypool's out. Game? Claypool's oh, out Claypool's today. Out. Okay. Yeah. So realistically, a terrible, what, uh, reporter on the game. <laughs> yeah. What what I'm looking for in this game is. That I I'm not looking for anything. I, I don't expect anything in this game. I I I just don't want to see Justin Fields die, and and that's what I'm afraid of in this game. I <laughs> I think we're gonna see a lot like yesterday where we saw 
where the Colts and Vikings were down. The Colts were up 33 nothing at halftime. The only difference is going to be the Bears are not going to mount a comeback. They're probably going to give up another 36 points in the second half and lose this game by 70. That's what I'm expecting uh, from today's I game. I don't that. have any hopes. I don't. Uh, the, the, our defense is terrible. The Eagles are a they they are an elite team in this league. Yeah, they are really really good. Uh, they and and the Bears need to. What the here's what yeah, I'll tell you what changing my mind. Here's what I want to see out of this game. I want the Bears to look at the Philadelphia Eagles and say that's what we need to do. Mm-hmm. We need to look at our quarterback the way that they looked at theirs, and we need to build around him the way that they built around him. And we need to be them in the next two to three seasons. That's what I want. That's the outcome I want from today's game. Absolutely. I mean, then I, I do want to see a little bit of growth from the quarterback position. Uh, maybe your guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, and, and like I said, I'd like to see more from Vilas Jones. This is a lost year for him, and we're not even going to see anything from him. Uh, from him next year, then is he just is that third round pick your only your first offensive uh player in the draft is just yeah. going to be a, a nothing? I mean, he did return some kicks and did okay a couple of weeks ago, but I, I, I'd like to see that. But I agree, I agree. I mean, you have to build your team around a quarterback, no quarterback's perfect. Yeah, I mean, Tampa Bay built a team, had to build a team around Tom Brady. Uh, um, you know, you even, I mean, look at Aaron Rodgers. He doesn't really have a lot around him. Look at how he's playing. I mean, I yeah. think, I think something else is going on there. I think he's getting old. Um, and then, so uh, I like, I, I think this is what drew, drew me to Johnny too, is the same thing that drew me to you. You guys are both dreamers. Johnny <laughs> chimes in and says, bears pulling upset today. We can talk about this on our next show. I, I, I don't see that happening. I don't see any way. Look in, in, in this year's NFL, I guess I should rephrase that. In this year's NFL, anything's been possible. And I've seen some teams beat some other teams. And I'm like, wow, how the hell did that happen? I don't think the Bears are that. I, I, I just can't see this defense stopping that offense. I can't. I could see maybe our offense keeping up with their offense. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can go toe-to-toe and get into a shootout with them, and maybe something crazy happens at the end. I just, I to me... I don't I don't think that this game's even close. I really don't. I I wish I I I wish it was a, going to be a close game because I'd be more interested in that. I just I don't I I don't know, man. It's this is probably There's the no least interested I've been. Is yeah, this is the least interested I've been in a game, a Bears game all season long because I just don't want to watch how bad this one's going to be. You know, uh yeah, I mean, I, I have to agree with you. I mean, I just think this is a really bad matchup for them. You need to stretch the field early enough and have to take more deep shots. I mean, they do take a lot of deep shots. I mean, I think I'd like to see them take more, though. I, I get what he's saying. You know, if he's only taken three or four deep shots. Now, again, we talked about it last week, Jeremiah. The Bears do have the most big plays in the NFL this season. Yeah. They, they've they nice. got they've got the most big plays in the NFL but I would like to see more than two or three shots downfield, especially with Justin Fields. Let, let, let's just go out there, guns blazing. Let's let's go out there and, and not have any handcuffs on anything. Let's let him play his game. Maybe and, even let him call the game. And I'll take that point even further. I mean, I think it's important to see what flosses can do with uh, with oh, after a bye week. I mean, I think yeah. that's important to, in grading your, your coaching staff. I mean, Nagy was terrible after the bye. Terrible. Yeah. After the bye, yeah, Maggie was terrible. Was period. Good. Yeah, yeah. Now you. Bet. <laughs> but I want to see. I mean, that's what that's what this coaching staff is trying to make a name for is preparing their team. Less penalties, more discipline. I mean, this was not a disciplined team the last couple of years. That's so. Not out of a bye, you should see that discipline. You should see that effort. Right? That's what I want to see uh, more than anything probably this week. Off a of bye week, that's how football is. You get more time. They have that week and a half before the Patriots game, and they looked really good against the Patriots. Maybe they can do the same thing here and at least keep it competitive for a couple of quarters. So before we get out of here, barring a Bears miracle, and say so let's just go out on a limb and say the Bears lose here today. Okay, I know it's a big limb. But – are we rooting for the Denver Broncos today to get back yeah. into that number two seed? Absolutely. Yes. I wanted the Colts 
uh, to actually win yesterday uh, as well, <laughs> even though they're what four eight two now. You would think <laughs> is Matt Ryan minimal. the worst quarterback ever with a lead of more than twenty five points? <laughs> On the thirty three point lead into the third quarter too. Yeah, three four minutes into the third quarter, it's still yeah. up thirty three not It was that ugly. Was a debacle. I almost at halftime. I. I saw them up 33 nothing at halftime. I wasn't even watching the game. I they got up I think it was 17 to nothing. I turned on Fortnite and started playing Fortnite with my kids. <laughs> and I wasn't watching the game. And then at halftime I saw the score was 33 nothing for the hell of it. I looked up my points bet app and if I would have made $100 bets for the Vikings to come back and win, it would have paid out over $11,000. Damn. And I didn't do it. I was like there's a dude they're down by 33. I'm not going to waste 100 bucks, you know what I mean? That's and then when they came back and they though. won it, I was like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> could you imagine had you just placed that one damn bet? I, man. Does the, well, does the, at the Bears blow a 33 point lead, which they're probably never going to get there, does that kill Virginia McCaskey? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> if, if so, I, if, if that's the case, I, I want them to have that. a 30 point lead today. I want them to have a 30-point lead today and lose 40 to 30. If that's what it takes to get Virginia McCaskey out of here, that's what I, I need. And when that finally happens, when Virginia McCaskey is finally gone and this team is finally ridden uh, of, of her influence and, and, and the way that she leads this organization, we are going to have a celebration of death here. I mean life. We're going to have a celebration, a celebration here on the show. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. All right, so before we go, what's your what's your pick for today? What's your score? God, they're going to score forty points on the Bears. I, I'd say, I, and I say the Bears do keep it somewhat competitive for a little bit of this game, but forty two twenty four, just yeah. picking numbers out of the air, something like so, that. Justin Fields will rush for seventy or eighty yards, even against this defense. So I'm a little bit more to. optimistic than you with the Bears offense. I'm a little less optimistic than you with the Bears defense. I've got the final of this one being Philly 53, Bears 30. We'll see. Mark it down. We'll Mark see. it down. All right, guys. It was a great show today. We had Tom Gorski, the ACL Pro on. We had our guy Johnny Torres on. We talked about the Cubs getting Dansby Swanson. The White Sox getting Andrew Benatendi. We talked Andy. about the Bears debacle today. Hit us up in the chat. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out everywhere. Catch us live from Bourbon Street, Thursday in January. Ryan, we'll talk about that here after the show. I know that was some news for you, but just uh, came through yesterday. So, Great. Um, and we're going to we're going to have a lot of good things coming. If you guys enjoyed the show, if you, there's stuff you didn't like about the show, let us know. We're all ears. We want yeah, to get better. We, we want to know what you guys want to talk about. Hit us up. Chime us up in the chat. Check out every time we post, share. It helps us out tremendously if you like it and share it to whatever feed you want to share it to. Your feed, a group feed, you want to get some, some influence on it. We love it all. Help us out. Thank you guys for joining today. Man Hour Nation, rise up. Are you ready for the best damn radio show on the planet? Man Hour Nation, 